Hello there. Uh, yeah, we're continuing with our project, working on this interior scene of a train station. Sorry, of a train. And uh, yeah, I think today we're going to be just adding the details and then maybe working on the materials, uh, lighting, and maybe conclude this project so we can move on, on to uh, the next thing. So without further ado, let's uh, get into it uh, by creating these uh, glass panels. So to do that, I'm just going to do them on the side here, and then I can bring them in later. So let's add a plane. Uh, if there is any issues, just let me know uh, so that I can fix, see if I can fix them. So let's create this panel here, uh, this glass panel. Hello film effects, how are you doing? Uh, let's uh, bring this up. Push this vertex down. Use Ctrl Shift B to bevel that. Use your middle mouse wheel. Okay. I think it's supposed to be around here. And I can add a loop here. Then push this vertex up. Like around there. And then maybe push this vertex down as well. Then I can select this edge. Then bevel those that edge to have something like this. Now I can round off these edges just a bit. I think just this, these two here. Using Ctrl Shift B to have something like that. We can add the solidify modifier, apply scale, just to have some thickness. And then turn on auto smooth. Then I'm also going to change the angle because I'm seeing that uh, these edges are not being smoothened so just change this angle to about 45 60 okay so i just have it to 45 make sure you just shade smooth and then we can add a bevel modifier so we can round off those edges a bit so i'm just going to reduce my offset here turn on harden normals and then also change the limit method to angle Something like that is good enough. Then I'm also going to add this. Uh, I don't know what you can call this, but uh, let me first subdivide uh, these edge loops here. Right click. I'm also going to straighten them. And I'm just going to bevel this edge loop here. Ctrl B, then extrude this like this, and then scale that in like so. And uh, then I can round off these vertices. Uh, let me just round off only these here. Just like that, now we have that part there. I think this edge here is supposed to be sharper, so let's go in and uh, try fixing that. So I can dissolve these vertices here and that there. Bevel this, but uh, make sure that I don't bevel it too much. Have something like that. And then, yeah, now we can place this into our scene. Just going to grab it, scale it down. Remember, it is uh, these glass panels are, are, are on every pole here uh, that we already created. So let's just move them closer. Let me see, is this a mesh? Yeah, so this is a mesh, so which means that we can have this. We can join this uh, glass panel to our pole here, and uh, they should be added to every part of our. Should be added on every pole uh, that we have in our scene. Something like that. 
I'll give it the glass material push that in just a bit let's go to the material mode here and see how things are looking not bad let's go to material settings here I make sure that the blend mode is set to blend and then the shadow can be set to alpha and then we can reduce the alpha here let me make this a separate material uh, because we need to cut uh, to give it some color so reduce this to something like that and uh, also give it a bluish tint something like that <coughs> now if we join this to this to this pole we should have these repeated all over let me bake these lights and see how things are going here so let me turn on the screen space reflections and uh, refractions and for our glass our glass material let me turn on screen space refractions as well uh, then okay my internet is slowing down really fast uh, let me just pick things here and uh, try fixing my internet so let's go and um, indirect lighting and heat back. Okay, I think the light has baked, so and I think it looks good. And see, we have some nice reflections and some soft shadows. Our light is also, yeah, looking great. Hunter Wells, how are you? I missed some. Can you start from the very beginning? I've just started. I've just started. You haven't missed much. Oh, these poles are now uh, glass. Let me give them the metal material as well. So I'll just go back here and assign them the metal material we just created. We created, I'm not sure if I have it here. Just use, let's just create a new material. And uh, save this as metal and assign all that to this here and uh, uh, let's see what else let's work on these seats now uh, which are very simple as well so I'm just going to go to the side here as well and then start working on these seats uh, I think if we start with a plane at this 90 degrees I'm going to change this to uh, to look dev uh, so that my PC doesn't lag too much and uh, then uh, so we're going to create this slanting edge so I'm just going to pull this vertex in just like that and uh, now we can select this entire thing and then extrude it in extrude it like that so if we select these edges we can round them off using ctrl b to bevel those edges like so and then auto smooth set auto smooth like that
Okay. Now we can select these. Maybe push it back a bit. So we have something like that. I think we have bolts around here. So maybe what I, what I can do is just subdivide this. Okay, I'm not sure why my internet looks slow uh, in my OBS, but uh, my connection looks good. Hello Grant, how are you doing? Just weekly saying hi, can't stay for long, but good luck with your stream. Uh, thank you man, thank you for being around, uh, for just saying hi, for the support. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, I missed your your live stream, uh, the texture painting, I guess I'll just have to go back and watch that, because I really was interested in uh, watching your texture painting uh, part, so I, I, just watch, I will just watch the replay. But uh, thank you for the support. So I'll do this, scale this on the y-axis. Just going to reset my origin to geometry like that. So I have something like that. And uh, I'll also subdivide this so that I can have a mirror modifier here. Then add this on the X axis, let's see. Okay, I'm just going to apply rotation because I think my axes are not uh, aligning. So I'm just going to apply rotation. Then have something like that. Then for the seed, I can go back to uh, the side view. Just select maybe this edge loop. Shift D, then I can also extrude this on Y axis like that. Then round this round off, round off this edge, Control Shift B, something close to that. Uh, then I'm going to use the solidify modifier here, but I don't want it to be applied uh, to this seat here, uh, to the bottom here. So what I'm going to do is Control L, separate it as an object. Um, First, I'm going to disable this mirror, then extrude this on the y-axis, like that. Then add a solidify modifier. Shift A. If you're seeing these issues here, uh, where parts of the mesh are intersecting, just use Shift N to recalculate the normals and uh, it should fix uh, that issue. Now, after we apply the, we add the solidify modifier, you can apply it so that we can make a few changes to the mesh. I want to round off these here. Let me first reduce my music here a bit. You can select these faces, pull them closer, then select this and push it down a bit. I can see this is angled a bit, it's slanting back. Uh, we can select this vertex here, push that back. And then we can select uh, these here, these edges, round them off using Ctrl B. I think we might need to push this back a bit, but uh, let's see. You can use again your middle mouse wheel uh, to add resolution. Now for this side, I think I'm going to push this up a bit, just so these are, this is a bit more thick than it is. And I'll select this, push it forward a bit like that. And select these edges. Control B. Round it off just a bit like that. Then scale it on the X axis. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's okay here. I can just add a loop here and delete this side. X delete faces and I can join this back to this here since it already has our modifiers turn on clipping so that we don't have any vertices are clipping through the mirror I just need to push this uh, down a bit like that have something like that and then let's see 
Okay, I think this extends out a bit. So I'm just going to grab this edge loop. Then push it out just a bit like that. And uh, let's see, we can add this detail here. So for that, I'm just going to select this edge loop, shift D to duplicate it. Push it out just a bit and then extrude it a tiny bit as well. Like that. But uh, I, don't, uh, I think this cross section is uh, a little bit smaller than the other. So I'm just going to select this edge loop and use Alt S to push the in, to push it in just a bit like that. You have to be very careful here if you're pushing in uh, what it says so that they don't intersect. So you have to come in here and uh, maybe just think some things a bit. So we have something like that. Now I'm also going to use, I don't know, uh, let me see, let me see, should I use the bevel modifier? Yeah, let's use the bevel modifier. No, actually no. Let's... Um, I'm thinking maybe I should use the bevel modifier, but uh, I think I shouldn't because I want to control uh, the different uh, roundness for... I, I want to have different bevels for, uh, for different uh, edges. For example here, I want this to have a larger bevel, and something like that. But uh, for this here, uh, this should have a thinner bevel. And uh, usually, if you use the bevel modifier, uh, it will give a uniform bevel for every sharp edge. Unless you use bevel weights, uh, where you can control uh, the bevel width. But, uh, so I want this to have a thinner bevel Maybe something like that. Uh, 